This is what my friends who are married don't understand. First off, it is so difficult to have been single throughout the entire pandemic and go through that profound trauma all alone without some kind of support system. And I also think it's difficult that you're no one's priority. Like there isn't, there aren't really people checking up on me in the same way as if you have someone to come home to. I don't have a partner. I've been single for at least like what, almost like four years since November of 2019, whatever, how long long that is. Okay, hold on. Pause it right there. Pause it right there. So she said, like, I've been single since November of 2019. Fun fact, I also became single in November of 2019. And I went through the whole pandemic single. And I don't relate to this at all. At all. Zero relatability. Like, I don't even understand what this means. Now, of course, during the pandemic, I lived with my siblings. Well, I have ten siblings, nine siblings. So I lived with three of my siblings. And I had another sibling who lived down the road with my nieces and nephews. So I was surrounded by family. And I did see my family during the pandemic. Okay? We did not stay inside of our houses away from each other. We definitely visited each other. So I'm going to assume what she is saying because she's putting way too much emphasis on having a relationship, is like she has no one. She doesn't have a mom or a sister or a brother or a cousin or a friend. I'm hearing that she must have no one, which is a very specific kind of person who has no one, right? Because again, I don't understand this idea of like, I didn't have a partner, so I had no one who made me a priority. Though I've heard this from my other straight girlfriends or my other girlfriends who felt similarly where they're like, getting like a call from my parents wasn't enough. And I don't really understand that, but I'm trying to understand it. Because again, what does that mean, right? Let's keep listening. And it's just so difficult because you realize that you have to be your own knight in shining armor, that there's no one coming to save you, that there's no one really is there for you. Like you just, you're alone at the end of the day. That is a Samantha Jones episode of Sex in the City. You realize no one is coming to get you if you are a single, independent woman because your parents don't always live near you, your friends don't always live near you. The day. And it's so much harder to go through the ups and downs and tumultuous of life when you don't have companionship and you don't have a partner. And it just, it sucks. This is what- Okay, so can you guys tell me what are the vibes? Discord is already being pretty judgy, which honestly, like, same. And I don't want to be that. I want to find the nuance. But uh, Discord says sob story, LOL. Discord says sounds needy as fuck. <laughs> says Discord says, uh, quote, someone's coming to save you, LOL. <laughs> We're so mean. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people felt this way, genuinely. Now, I saw this the most from only children or from people with one or two siblings they were estranged from. I do think that one of the privileges I have is the fact that my I come from a really big family. So I have cousins all over the world. I have people all over this planet. I could go see people I've never even met who would welcome me into their home and feed me and give me a place to stay just because I'm their cousin or because I'm related to them or because they know who my parents are, even if they're not blood related. So I'm really lucky that my family worked really hard. My parents worked really hard to form good communities and gave their kids a lot of good neighbors to know, if you will. So I'm not sure if she is in a situation where she has literally nobody. But what do you guys think this means? Tiger says, I make me my priority. And I think that is kind of the narrative a lot of us do have. But I'm a very independent person. Like, I love people. I need my inner circle. I love them so much. But I don't actually need to, like, live near them. And I don't really need to have them live with me. I just need access to them to the best of my ability. So, like, I understand. I'm living in Europe now. And I have my partner. I'm not looking for friends in Croatia. God bless. I'm not looking for girls nights out. I'm not looking for a book club. I'm not looking to leave the house. That's not the stage of life I'm in. I'm in very like, I love my home. I love my husband. I love my cat. I'm good. Like I worked really hard to have a life where I didn't have to leave the house, right? That's why I spent my whole life going out and doing clubs and doing things. Like I didn't do all that work to go out still. But that's, if that's your way of having fun, no judgment. I worked to be at home. So for me, I I don't need my inner circle literally seeing me. I'm good with the internet. Like I just talked to my sister. We finally just caught up. She's like, girl, I have not caught up with you. You got married. What the F? Let's talk. I just like Marco Poloed my sister. We finally got on the phone. We talked. Like I don't need to catch up with everybody all the time to feel connected because we also text all the time and texting is pretty satisfying to me. I'm pretty satisfied with texting. 
Um, and this is my job, so I'm pretty social. But so what is so I'm already the stereotype of like I don't go outside, right? What is she? Like, what is she that she felt like during the pandemic it sucked because she didn't have a partner? Like, what does that mean? YouTube says, just sounds petty towards her married couple friends. Maybe. It does sound bitter to me. But why would you be bitter? What gets a person to being bitter? And she's she's like, um, she's like a, a big, a big content creator. She has um 500,000 followers, 12 million likes. Look, she's a big content creator. And she's gay. She's bisexual. Oh, in New York, comedy, healing, and growth journey. Let's see if this is a follow-up video. I really regret going back into corporate full-time and letting my TikTok channel fail. Like, I... Oh, no, she's just a complainer. I can tell. Oh, I can tell this trope. She's just a complainer. I feel like the biggest fucking loser. I feel like the biggest fucking failure. And I feel so lost in my life right now. I'm just... Constant. Call me. I know I'm expensive, but I'm worth every penny. I'm better than life advice itself, girl. Better than self help. Better than your local priest. I'm better than your mother. Give me a call, girl. I can work with this. Well, maybe it's up to you, girl. But this amount of negativity is not good for your skin, girl. No, ma'am. Look at the comments. Be gentle with yourself. You're not a failure. Grow up. How old are you? Hold on before I lecture you. 29. Yeah, okay. So again, like we have to grow up now. We're getting into our 30s. This is like where we're going to be big girls. We're going to put on big girl panties. Like, no, you do not get to be verified with 500,000 like followers on TikTok and complain about how your channel is dead. Like, girl, what does that even mean, girl? You want to check out my stats? Do you want to compare my social like blade to your social blade? Like, do we want to have conversations? Like, we're both online media people. I'm more than happy with where I'm at. There's no way you can't be happy with your where you're at. There's no way. Like, what are we talking about? We're not unhappy with our jobs. We're unhappy with our like relationship we're having with our consciousness. Calling yourself a failure, girl. Girl, mm -mm. I do not accept this from modern women. I will not. Like, yes, we all feel like failures because, like, life is hard, blah, blah, blah. But, like, also, no. Okay? Not really. Like, you must have done something in your life to be proud of. You're living in a modern world where you get to be gay in New York. Welcome. Like, what is this? I really regret... Let's watch it. ...going back into corporate full-time and letting my TikTok channel fucking fail. Like, I feel like the biggest fucking loser. I feel like the biggest fucking failure. And I feel so lost in my life right now. I'm just constantly crying like every single day. And I hate feeling so vulnerable and feeling like you're meant for something more and feeling like this is just not cutting it. Like, and, and even though maybe like, you know, even when you have the stable job, even when you're su supposedly have your life together and everything, all the boxes are checked on paper and you're still just so unhappy and unfulfilled and you do all the stupid little healthy habits so that's not the problem right where you're just like oh my god like my soul this is an introspection issue because if it's not mental health like if it's not like okay i need to go to therapy i have schizophrenia i have bipolar i have borderline okay then you can do all the things and still not feel good because you're not having a relationship with yourself like a real one not this faux vogue one not this like cosmopolitan one not the like fake therapy like philosophy crap they do in these magazines i mean literally a lack of satisfaction with your literal existence not having joy which obviously she lacks is a relationship with yourself like your consciousness your soul whatever you want to call it soul feels crushed and i feel and also Somebody pointed out, look how she didn't blame men for her loneliness, That just that she was lonely. Exactly. Like, I'm giving up on myself, but I'm also trying and trying to just do the dishes as a task in itself, mm -hmm. right? Relatable. And I just feel so overwhelmed right now. I feel sad and overwhelmed and alone, and I feel, like, depressed that just every single category of my life seems to be failing. Like I don't have an established friend group in New York. I love New York though. Like I love living in New York. I love my apartment. I love my dog. Um, I, but, but like beside that, like at least I know that I love living in the city and I want to stay here forever and ever. Right. But like, I just, I'm so unfulfilled in my career and I, Okay, this is fixable, girl. I understand this really fast. People keep asking, why does she post this on the internet? Um, you're literally watching a streamer. Sometimes I'll read comments like, 
oh my gosh, this girl posted something on the internet and now she's mad people are replying to it. Guys, I'm a YouTuber. Do you understand you're watching a streamer who posts crying videos of herself who used to post like borderline episodes on the internet? Like, why are you in my audience wondering why people are posting this when I used to be that content creator? Because we're reaching out into the world and asking like, hey, do you see me? Are you, why are you asking that question on my channel? Like, what do you mean why do people post these videos? Because they're literally trying to reach that somebody. They're trying to reach me. Girl, call me, girl. I'm worth it, girl. Literally, this is about, we can, Brittany, we can hear you breathing into the mic. <sighs> Sorry, my bad. Um, but like, anyways, do you get what I'm saying? Like, she doesn't, she just, she seems like she doesn't really appreciate what she has. Well, she can't. You can't appreciate what you have. Gratitude, humility, all of those things, right? That is a learned tool. That's like a tool you gather. Humility is very hard to just, it's a, it's a journey. Like you can't just wake up one day and be like, I have humility. Like that's not, mm. She needs a, an awakening. She needs like a reality check and she doesn't have anyone to ground her. And no one in New York is probably going to do it. So of course she's not going to be able to do it. She needs somebody to ground her who will be with her and be like, look, girl, I'm not going to really judge you, but also girl, they need support. Everyone needs support. Eh. In this case, it's not support in the way that I think of support. She needs a reality check and then she needs support because that's she needs to bubble pop. She needs to pop her bubble. She's too in her bubble and she doesn't understand like there is life outside this bubble. And so she doesn't know, but she needs support when she pops the bubble. Right. So when she pops the bubble and grounds herself, like the path to grounding herself, she is going to need some support. Right. So she's going to need someone. She needs ayahuasca. I mean, that's the problem. I feel like some people do do drugs and they go with it with this mindset. And they're like, why didn't the drugs fix me? Because you have to be ready to shatter the illusion of your ego. You actually have to want to shatter the many layers of your ego, like your consciousness. You're going to have to rewrite yourself as a person in some ways and then find the version of you that's the most honest and real. But that takes layers and layers and layers of bubble popping. It's a big journey. It's long. It can take years. It can be one bubble pop after another. So again, okay, <sighs> again... I pivoted to product design and I feel like it's just been one job after another and it's been hell, not because of the actual work, but more so because of like the environment and it makes me feel afraid to go back into corporate because as someone who is neurodivergent, I have a hard time picking up on these subtle cues in the corporate world. Oh, girl, why didn't you say you were neurodivergent from the beginning, girl? I should have known by the bisexual in your in your title, girl. You're probably running out of spoons every five seconds. One neurodivergent to another. One bisexual, well, pansexual to another. Let me tell you, okay? I work for myself for a reason. You have content creation. It's hard though. It's a lot. There's a lot of spoons that go into this. Trust. Trust. But there's a way to make good money. You know, I don't do too bad for myself. I'm pretty happy with what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Could always make more. <laughs> always. But you know what I mean? Like, I get it right? It's a lot. So I, if I was going to talk to her, I'd probably start off with like, okay, why do we think we exist on the planet, girl? And she'd be like, wait, what? Because there's no way she's had that conversation yet. Because again, you can face the realities of what you have to do in existence the moment you remember why you're existing. Existence is tedious. You guys know it's my least favorite part about being alive is dealing with other people, governments, taxes, bad neighbors, if it was just me on this planet, I don't think I'd complain a day in my life. But the hard part about life is dealing with other people. Being neurodivergent, being chronically ill, and existing in a world that tells you, like, not only do we not care, but we're not even going to make it possible for you to exist in this world. And then you have to move to bubbles where it is possible to exist, right? So she just needs a lot of tools, but good for her for being so successful. And sometimes I think... There's like a version of success people reach because they don't go on the introspection journey. And then it's probably better because once you go on it, at least you have this to fall back on. But it's good. She's like in a good position to go on that journey. She just has to really want to do it, which might shatter every illusion she has about her job and her identity and everything else, right? 
But like, no wonder she's stressed. She got a lot of things against her, girl. Like, I just don't get it. Like, I, I, it doesn't, it goes over my head and I feel like the biggest idiot ever. And I just feel like I don't belong. And I feel like I'm too much of a weirdo to belong in corporate. And I don't aspire to be a man. You like literally probably are. I know I am. I'm so weird. I could never do corporate. Like props to you for trying. But lots of people in neurodivergency and queerness do flourish in corporate, Avi. But it depends. Like maybe she's not. Maybe she's not meant to do this. Right? Somebody get this girl my email. Manager, I don't aspire to be some creative director in-house. Like I don't aspire for that at all. Like I just kind of want to be a weirdo and perform and be an artist and... See, that's strange to me as somebody with literally who's struggling to get more followers on social media. I'm making enough money to live on my own. I'm not making like millions here. You know, last year I did six figures, which was pretty good. And this year I'm going to I'm going to either hit it or probably hit just below it. You know what I mean? So because I'm I worked less in the beginning of the year because of my fibro, but I'm back on it, guys. I'm back on it. We're working hardcore. <laughs> you just wait, ladies. Nothing but content. OK. And I don't know how she's not making enough money to just be a TikToker. How do you have 500,000 followers and she can't just work from home, right? So that's the question. When I hear big people with big followings say like, oh my God, I wish I could just do this full time. Why aren't we doing it full time? Like, that's always my question. Like, why weren't we, what, how, how aren't we monetizing ourselves? Now, to be fair, Papa Gut. He had a milli followers on TikTok and they kicked him off. So TikTok, not reliable. But if she could transfer this to shorts, YouTube, so many other things, why isn't she a creative full-time? Because if I can be a creative full-time, like, unless she's living in a very expensive New York apartment, like, where she needs to make, like, 250000 a year, well, then, you know, like, that's different, right? I, I, I'm living a much more humble life so I can be a creative full-time and I can save. So maybe she's in a different financial game than I am. Talk a lot and because well, I don't want to talk about right? And like I just want to. Hey, uh, the F word gets demonetized on YouTube and it takes all my revenue if or it gives me limited ads. So if you guys want to like this stream or be a member or do anything to combat that, like, please, thank you. God bless. Like, I miss doing social media full time and I miss being able to connect with you guys and I miss being able to like I, I just I'm, I'm mad at myself because I didn't pursue it as hard as I should have. And I thought that the right decision was for me to just go into tech full time and kind of have this. So relatable. So many of us who do content creation, it's always like, how do I go into this harder? Like even having stress can feel like having a nine to five. And so it feels like, how can I do creation like all the time? Again, I don't know her life situation. I don't know if she's partnered now. I don't know if she has, like, I doubt it because we just watched that video. I don't know if she has kids. I don't know if she has to be in New York. I don't know if she's willing to move somewhere else. But I am not convinced that she doesn't have the option to be creative full time. But she has to know how to brand herself and how to make money. Like, she might not know how to make revenue for herself because, like, on AdSense, I make, like, no revenue. You know what I mean? So on TikTok, I don't know if she makes revenue. This be the side hustle and the side hobby. And now that I've tried it, I literally hate it because I feel like I'm giving up on myself when I work full time. Because when you work full time, like you basically just have time to go to work and cook dinner, walk the dog, shower, go to the, or go to the gym, shower, right? And then you're just like, that's it. That's the end of the day and like maybe you have an hour, okay, like uh, to like read a book, but you're so tired from having Yes. Okay. So obviously like exhaustion is a thing. Um, every day is a new day for me. Like I can't work for a company because I need to wake up and ask myself like, what are we capable of doing today? There's always a base of what I have to get done for the day. There's always a base of what I'm obligated to get done for the day. So like post a video, do the podcast, do a live show. That's my job. That's what I'm showing up for. And then everything else gets negotiated based off of spoons, right? So some things aren't going to happen today that I wish could, but then I always give myself a list of things that I have to get done today. Like we have to eat, we have to drink water, we have to sleep, we have to do those things, right? Um, so I understand that. We're all working with the same 24 hours, but not working with the same 24 hours because for some of us, brushing our teeth takes what we call a full hour of time, right? For some of us, it takes a spoon. In a spoon, you only have so many a day. So she needs to get spoon theory into her vocabulary and she needs to start thinking about how many spoons she has a day. And so she needs to think about what is actually going to recharge my spoons at the end of the day. And maybe a corporate isn't for her.
having to put up with people's garbage and corporate. I swear, I am. it's much easier for me to deal with serious medical emergencies than it is for me to write an email. Like, I get so anxious I get talking that. to people in corporate. Same. Literally so relatable. I could literally, like, your arm's just been cut off. I know what to do. Sending an email. Oh, my God. Every time I send an email and, like, my partner reads it, he's like, why do you sound so autistic? I was like, why do you sound autistic? He's like, why do you write it like that? I was like, why do you write it? And it makes sense. And he goes, but you write it kind of like this or that. Like, people who, like, are writing an email stresses me out, bro. It stresses me out because I do type weird and I get it. But oh my gosh, like I would rather take like literally did your tooth just like snap in your gums and like you're bleeding. I got you. Did you just like fall on the floor? And hit, I got you. Like I feel like I can handle a medical emergency way better. Because I feel like everything that I say is wrong to them. And I'm just very literal in the way that I speak. And like I don't pick up on these like subtle little cues and things. And I just feel like a big loser. <laughs> I. Okay. All of this is relatable. This is like the. um. Yeah, like, okay, mm hmm yeah, okay, relatable. It's so interesting, like, play to your strengths. Obviously, the best tool in the game is play to your strengths. Find out what it is, because to be honest, like, this is exhausting. Living is exhausting. Doing work like this is exhausting. Um, yeah, I feel like she got good views, dude. She She should be able to do this full time. You know what I mean? She should be able to do content creation full time with these views. The fact that she's not makes me think like something is going on. Yeah, it's like I learned that Kidology, I think she said on a stream, she was making like no money. She was living just off AdSense. And I'm like, you have over 100,000 subscribers. You didn't like she just learned how to like multi revenue stuff. I was like, oh, that's so interesting. Like I'm a small content creator. So I know it's in like literally imperative i know i'm failing by not also having a fansly as much as an of like i know i'm failing by not posting to tiktok every day not failing but i know that i'm not making as much as i could be making but it is exhausting i run out of spoons i do all my editing myself like it is exhausting i don't make enough money to justify paying for an editor as much as i thought i could afford one realistically in order to as a content creator creator be able to pay your tax next year because i'm a 1099 and save for a house like I genuinely have to like, st you know, gram stuff in this and do it all at home or, you know, Mike from impulsive. Like I just, there's something about it in the podcast. I can't this have anyone what? else edit because my podcast feels like some version of me to an extent. And I just can't have anyone edit it. Plus I never do it in one take. I always do it in multiple, not one take, but I always have like pauses in between because I run out of breath. I have like a problem with my breathing. So I'll run out of breath while I'm monologuing on the podcast and I have to sit there and breathe for 30 seconds or I get like overheated and I have to like walk around and come back. I can't. That's why the podcast has edits because I literally have to get up. And I don't know if it's like it's probably just like chronic health related. But yeah, I like I can't send that to an editor. That's so stressful. Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool.